stripes and bright stars through the perilous flight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets that glare the bombs bursting Good evening. On behalf of the Barton Community College administration, staff, and faculty, and the 48th graduating class of Barton Community College, I extend to each and every one of you a warm welcome to our lovely campus. I offer the Assembly's collective thanks to instructors Carol Erickson and Stephen Luth for our processional music, to the Army National Guard of Great Bend, for the presentation of the colors, and to Celina, Kansas sophomore and graduate, Ms. Alexis Carabinas, for her rendition of our national anthem. Those of us who are blessed to work for Barton know that there are many wonderful moments and days throughout any given academic year. But as you might expect, graduation is the very best day on a college campus, as we celebrate both past accomplishments and future promise. Today embodies all that this college community has worked toward over the past many weeks, months, and years. This evening is the opportunity to pause and honor the accomplishments of community members, faculty and staff, and of course our graduates. We are so grateful that you have chosen to spend this evening with us. As is typical with an event like this and with such a wonderfully large number of attendees, just a bit of housekeeping. We would ask that ceremony photographs be taken only from your seating areas, and following the ceremony, the entire stage area will, will be available for personal photos. And the professional photos that are being taken tonight will be available next week on Barton's website. Quite fortunately, our at times spirited Kansas weather appears to be pleasant and well-behaved this evening. Should there be identified any need to alert you to a weather situation, we have prepared for that and we will instruct you accordingly. Now to proceed with our recognitions and our celebration. We are grateful to have with us this evening Mr. Bryant, known to many of us as Buzz, Bernie, who will offer this evening's invocation and later our benediction. Mr. Bernie is the executive director of Live Like Jesus Today Ministries, and he co-sponsors Contagious, one of our faith-based student organizations here at Barton. We will remain standing for the invocation, and I would ask gentlemen in attendance to please remove their hats. Mr. Bernie. 
Thank you. What a blessing and an honor it is to be here tonight. And before I pray, I was just thinking, um, some years ago, I was sitting right here in this same gymnasium um, waiting to get my associate's degree. And I just want to say a big thank you to Barton Community College and everybody that has a part of it because it's touched and blessed many, many lives and it's going to touch and bless many more. And Barton Community College is a great asset and a great blessing to Barton County in this part of Kansas. So thank you, everybody at Barton Community College. Um, if you would, if you'd bow your head, I just want to say a word of prayer and thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, this beautiful evening. Father, I thank you for every breath that we take because they're both gifts from you. Lord, I thank you that your love abounds much. I thank you, God, that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end, and you're everything in between that we need. And Lord, this night belongs to these students, Father, and so I pray an abundant blessing upon each one of these students that have worked so hard. Lord, we know that all of them at different times have been anxious, been tired, been weary, um, and then many times there's probably some that wanted to give up and quit. But God, we thank you that you brought them to this point, to this time, God, um, because they've endured much, they've conquered much, um, they've went, went through much, and God, I thank you that tonight they're more than conquerors, and you've got them here to be recognized and to be rewarded for a job well done. So, Lord, tonight we thank you for the families. Some of us have traveled from very close to here. Some of us have traveled from faraway states, and some have traveled from faraway nations. And we thank you for that travel and mercy that you brought family and friends here. God, I thank you because each one of us are here tonight because one or more of these students have touched our lives. And, God, we thank you for them relationships. But, God, tonight let these students be honored. Let them know that they've worked hard and this is one more stepping stone in the plan that you have for their lives, God. There's so much potential in this room right here with these students, God, that the limit is um, unimaginable. And so, God, tonight we just want to give you praise and glory. I want to thank you for bringing Congressman Marshall back home. And, Lord, I pray you'll anoint his uh, speech. I pray you'll open our hearts and we'll receive from his word. Lord, I thank you um, for the students that will be sharing. I pray that you'll just bless their words. And God, tonight, let us just be here in awe of these uh, young men and women and students that have worked so hard. And we just thank you for who you are. And it's in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bernie. Assembly, you may be seated. It's a good day. In my 20 years of working for Barton, I have been privileged to witness hundreds of good days. This idea of good days became something of a theme for me this year, and I'll end this academic year in keeping with that theme. Although long and exhausting, the days that we open up housing for a new fall semester and welcome residents to our campus, the days that we begin new semesters and new sessions, those are all good days. The days our students have the opportunity to put their hard work on display for our community, whether through a concert, a recital, an art show, or an athletic contest, those, those are all good days. Sometimes a good day is a student's relief at having survived his or her first speech in public speaking, or the celebration of having successfully completed a particularly challenging class. It might be the day that a faculty, faculty member sees that a student really seems to be understanding what he or she has been teaching. A good day could be the student's excitement at receiving that first student employment paycheck or a big win over a worthy opponent. This year in particular, one good day, clear back in the fall, was having the opportunity to sit in my office and listen to some young men tell me about their dreams of making a difference in the world someday. One spoke about wanting to work with juveniles in the justice system and about wanting to help them make better decisions and build better lives. One told me about hoping to become a high school counselor because many of the young men he knew growing up didn't have a lot of strong role models to look up to 
and to help them navigate the challenges of growing up. It was an otherwise ordinary weekday at work, but listening to those dreams was an undoubtedly a good day. The culmination of all these good days, and yes, some not so good ones too, brings us here to the very best good day on any college campus. Undoubtedly, this evening represents the very best of Barton. Tonight, we come together to celebrate students who, regardless of what their journey at Barton looked like, have stayed the course and accomplished their educational goals. Some we expect will continue on to work toward additional degrees and certifications, and some will enter or re-enter the workforce. We could not be more proud to share the accomplishments of this evening with you, and we could not be more humbled that you would join us in this recognition. At this time, I invite the fifth president of Barton Community College, Dr. Carl Heilman, to offer his greeting and comments and then to introduce our commencement speaker. Dr. Heilman. Thank you, Ms. Maddie. Thank you, uh, Buzz Bernie. Thank you very much. Graduates, family, and friends, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, and staff, I welcome each of you to Barton Community College's 48th annual graduation, a celebration where we recognize the success of each of our students who will soon be graduates of Barton Community College. These graduates will be joining the thousands of graduates who have proceeded and who have gone on their paths to success and well-being. Each of these fine students before us has their own Barton story, story of learning, success, and self-betterment. Barton is a community college of diversity, where each individual is unique according to their needs, goals, and achieving their objectives with the support of caring family, friends. America represents many values that we hold dear, and this community college represents a front door for people to open and achieve the value of education and all that it encompasses. Today, we also celebrate that these students accepted the opportunity to be Barton-driven and have succeeded. While it was the discipline and desire of each of these students that kept them on their path to graduation, it was the assistance and support of the faculty and staff that led these students to this day. So as we applaud the achievements of our graduates, we also recognize the role of the faculty and the staff of this fine college. As a leader of this college, I'm extremely blessed to work with outstanding colleagues who embrace and are committed to the success of all the Barton students that they serve. My sincere thanks to the faculty and staff who are before us. I humbly ask that faculty and staff stand and be recognized for their devotion, passion for student learning. We recognize your successes and we extend our congratulations to each of you. Would you please rise and be recognized for your outstanding service. Thank you. Thank you very much. Finally, no community college graduation celebration would be complete without thanking the family and friends of these students. Like the faculty and staff, you've been there in so many ways to help in this journey. You are to be congratulated for your love, support, and sacrifice. We thank you for partnering with us and supporting Barton Community College. We realize that each graduate appreciates all you have done. At this time, I would like to recognize six exceptional leaders that are involved in moving Barton into the future. These leaders represent the Board of Trustees for Barton Community College, and they represent the people of Barton County in the governance of the college. I would ask that you hold your applause until all have been introduced and are standing. Seated behind me, Mr. Mike Johnson, the Board Chair and KACCT Delegate, going on 19 years of service. Mr. John Mosier, Vice Chair, 12 years service. Mr. Don Larned, Secretary, 13 years. Mr. Mike Mitten, seven years. 
Miss Tricia Reeser, entering her first year. And Mr. Gary Burke, who's not with us, is now in his third year. Please join me in recognizing these dedicated leaders of the college. Join us on stage this evening as the Honorable Congressman representing the 1st Congressional District of Kansas, Dr. Roger Marshall. Dr. Marshall, a longtime local physician in Central Kansas, won a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives in Kansas 1st District in 2016, where he has been a vocal proponent of higher education, community colleges, career programming, and technical education training. Higher education has played a major role in Dr. Marshall's life and career. In addition to an MD from the University of Kansas, he has earned a bachelor's degree in agriculture and applied sciences from Kansas State University. Perhaps most relevant to the audience at commencement is the degree with which he kicked off his higher education journey. It's gonna hurt a little bit to say this, but he earned his associate degree from Butler Community College. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman, for joining us. As we celebrate our graduates' achievements, I now present to you Dr. Roger Marshall, Congressman of First District. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, it truly is great to be here tonight, and I guess, the, uh, Dr. Hoffman, the first question is, have I delivered any of these kids out in the audience tonight? Nobody's proud enough to raise their hands, but I bet a few of them I have. Certainly, I, I am honored to be here, and I think the first thing, just to wake you up, is we're going to do a selfie, because about 12,000 people will see this in the next 20 minutes, so wait, can you just do something crazy? Wait. All right, so we got the selfie. You know, I'm, I truly am so honored. Yes, my son, is the, um, my son is the person who dabbed the speaker, in case anybody missed that earlier, this, earlier last year when we got sworn in. You know, I'll tell you how, how honored I am to be here. It's been an incredible year for a, a little kid from uh, El Dorado, Kansas. And over the past year, I probably have sat down with President Trump five or six times. I've met with the uh, leaders from China, my wife and I did in China. Uh, I sat down with Benjamin Netanyahu for an hour and a half in Israel. We met some guy named Castro in Cuba. But the, certainly the greatest honor this year I'll have, I think, is to give this speech. It truly is from my heart. I'm honored to be here. So, so thank you for letting me participate in this so much. Let me stop and, and honor the people that are getting their high school diploma tonight. One of the things I often tell single moms somewhere in a pregnancy was the single most predictor of your child's future will be as if you go back and finish your high school degree. The single best predictor of a single mom's success of their child is going and back and finishing that high school degree. And that would be true for a dad as well. So I'm so proud of you that have done that. I'm proud of you that have uh, done your certificates as well. And I think that that certainly is a wave of the future as we try to fill these jobs all over Kansas. I think my, my touch point, like Dr. Heilman talked about, though, is my community college experience. And I want to share part of that. Not only did I graduate 38 years ago from Butler County, and you know the only difference is there was a grizzly back here and, and not a cougar, but my wife was also uh, graduated first with an LPN degree and uh, later an RN degree, and that's what was able to get us through medical school without any doubt. And even through residency, her, her RN degree from Butler County Community College allowed us to start our family and not starve to death for, for those eight years. Uh, if I would share the memories of my community college, I bet, much like yours, it goes back to the people. And maybe I would share the stories of two people from my community college who had a great, a great uh, place in my heart still. One was, was uh, Ollie Isom. Ollie Isom was a, a, a gentleman who was larger than life. He had won back-to-back -back, uh, junior college cross-country championships in 1968 and 69. And I went to co college on a track scholarship and an academic scholarship. But Coach Isom was my economics 101 and 102 teacher. Uh, but Coach Isom kind of taught us like my football coach taught us. He had a 
chalkboard and a piece of chalk. We still had chalk in those days. And what I remember about Coach Isom is he would be up on the chalkboard and as he was writing, he would break a piece of chalk about three times every speech he gave as he just was pressing so hard. And what I remember about Coach Isom is I remember the first time he put up a, a uh, supply and demand curve, and this was 1980. And he said, you know, we have a new president elected now, and he's some hotshot from California, and he's talking about trickle-down trickle economics. And he said, you know, I wonder one day if government will move this supply and demand curve. And just like yesterday, as, as history has progressed, I remember Coach Isom's stories and what a great inspiration he was for me. The other person I would talk about is my track coach, John Francis, who was son of legendary track coach Alex Francis up in Fort Hayes. Uh, the first day of track practice, we all gathered around the gym and everybody was bragging about how high they jumped, in my case, how far I'd thrown the javelin, what our times were, and, and Coach Francis walked in the room with a stopwatch and a yardstick and he said, don't tell me, show me. And that's been a great piece of life, a, a, a lesson of life is, uh, as they say, you know, talk is cheap. What I want to know is can you get up every day, can you beat a class on time, can you do all your chores in front of you and, and finish the day strong? So Coach Isom, Coach, uh, Coach Francis, gr both great inspirations in, in my lifetime and great memories of my community college days. I hope you have fun memories as well, li like I did. Um, we used to go to a place called Pogo's and uh, do disco dancing on ladies' night on Tuesday nights and play flag football and, and just a host of memories from community college as well. I want to tell you a little bit about the economy that you all are getting to launch yourself into. Uh, some of you are going to go into a career field, some of you are going to wait two years, but this is the best national economy I've seen in my professional lifetime. For the past decade, we've struggled with a gross domestic product of around 2%, but our GDP now is around 3%, you know, maybe at 3.1%, and the unemployment rate for the nation has dropped below uh, 4% for the first time in several decades. In Kansas, the unemployment rate is around 2%. So you guys have a great opportunity to go into a work field and make a good living to start with. As I look across the country and across Kansas, the biggest economic challenge that I see for the next decade or two is a lack of skilled employees. And you guys are the solution to this. Across the country, we have some, some 5 million open jobs. Kansas has 50,000 open jobs. Probably 500,000 of those jobs across the country would require some type of computer science skills, not necessarily a PhD in computer science, but some ability to work computer science. The folks that finish the welding program here, the folks that finish any of the technical programs here, have to have some type of computer science skills. And I would just implore the school boards, the trustees behind me, don't let kids graduate from grade school, middle school, high school, let alone a community college without some significant computer science skills. Whether you want to work at Caterpillar uh, or, or work in the, in the oil industry around here, some access to computer science skills will be, will be tremendous. So but I, what I'm very proud of, though, is this economy that's turned around in the past several years. I want to leave you maybe just with a, my few thoughts on life. I'm often asked, uh, you know, what's made the difference in my life? And what I would talk about are the, the four pillars of my life, faith, family, community, and education. Faith, I would encourage you when it comes to faith that you wear it, wear it on your heart and not your shirt sleeve. Stay part of your family. Right now, many of you young folks don't realize it, but your parents are actually very smart and wise and you owe them a great debt of gratitude. So, so stick close to that family who will love you no matter what, no matter if, and will get you through the tough times. Community, when I talk about community to some of the congressmen from the coast, they look at me, so why is community so important to you? And, and I, I had some thoughts about community, but then I look around this room and I see Larry Zinn's name up here and Dr. Flesky and Dr. Hilderband's name and, and the Best Western and Perkins I think of some of the trustees behind me and the interactions that we've had. Community is where a hospital meets a community college, which meets the WIC program downtown at the, at the county health department, which meets the Catholic Social Service Department, 
and we all come together to help a person, help a family uh, keep it together through some tough times. So community has always been important. And the last pillar is education. When it, when it comes to education, certainly I've been very, very blessed. I, I would tell you, never be ashamed of your community college education. I was able to go to Kansas State University, Kansas University Med School, and now uh, under residency in U.S. Congress and have feel like I had a world-class education. There's nobody, uh, frankly, that's had a better education than, than I've had. And, and I would spit my education up against anybody in the world. Uh, that education, though, the, the last pillar, that last piece, though, is just to remind you. I'm sure you all remember the, the, uh, the, the, the saying of the tortoise and the hare, that the race doesn't always go to the hare, but the tortoise. Education is that tortoise. Education is that, that analogy in life where you keep at it, you try to learn something every day. Despite those five million open jobs in this country right now, probably 600,000 people quit looking for work. One of the reasons they quit looking for work is they quit learning. I have no idea what you all will be doing 20 years from now, but never quit learning. Never hesitate to go get one more certificate, to go get one more credit of class. There's so many great opportunities ahead of you. And you know, maybe finally I would ask, ask you a, a couple quick questions. Um, how many people in this graduating class took a class here before they officially enrolled, before, before they finished high school? How many of you took a class here before? That's one of the great successes that, of this state that we're doing right now, is getting high school kids enrolled. Those are the kids that, that don't, don't drop out because they're already engaged. And the last question I would have for this class is how many of you, like me, are first generation college students? Let me just applaud you as well. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll close with that and just say once again, I'm grateful, I'm humbled, I'm, I'm honored to represent this great state of Kansas. I'm very proud to be a strong voice in Washington, D.C. For, uh, for this great state. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for, let, uh, my heart for letting me participate in, in your graduation. I'm so honored. Thank you for your comments and your service to the great state of Kansas, Congressman Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take just a moment to direct your attention to the flags displayed behind the faculty and the students seated on the gymnasium floor. In recognition of the diverse student population we enjoy at Barton, Barton's Student Senate secures flags from the countries of the international students who choose to attend Barton. The flags on display in the gymnasium this evening are those representing the countries of international students who are graduating tonight. We are so appreciative of our student senate officers who carry on this tradition of recognizing part of the diversity of Barton. During commencement, in addition to recognizing the collective accomplishments of our students, we also take the opportunity to recognize outstanding individual achievement and contributions, and we will begin that now. Every year, it is truly my great honor to present the Outstanding Graduate Awards. Each year, faculty, staff, students, and community members are invited to nominate students who they feel exemplify the qualities of an outstanding graduate. This year, seven students were nominated based on the criteria of active participation in activities, organizations, or leadership positions, demonstrated academic achievement, and service to the community. While all of them are certainly deserving of the honor, the committee was limited to choosing only two to win the Outstanding Graduate Award. Before we meet and hear from this year's Outstanding Graduates, I would like to recognize the other nominees. I ask that the nominees stand when their names are read. Our nominees included Samson Colebrook, <laughs> Seth Gruber, <laughs> Ty 
Josie Hickey. Alexandria Julian. And Christian Rivas. Thank you. You may be seated. I will introduce our outstanding graduate speakers and share a bit of the nominator's comments with you before we hear them speak. Carolina Temponi Gonsalves. <laughs> of Brasilia, Brazil, is is the daughter of Hosanna Temponi Gonsalves and Wagner Gonsalves. During her Barton career, Carol has competed as part of the Cougar Volleyball Program and was named to the NJCAA first all-academic team. She has worked as a student employee with the Central Kansas Upward Bound Program, has assisted Barton's Sports Information Department with photography coverage of athletic events, and has worked for Great Western Dining in Barton's Cafeteria. She is a member of the Society for Collegiate Leadership and Achievement, as well as a member of Barton's Phi Theta Kappa and Alpha Sigma Lambda Honor Societies. Carolina will continue both her academic and her volleyball career next fall at Lourdes University in Ohio. Her educational goals include earning a doctoral degree in physical therapy. Carolina's nominator described her as an excellent example of someone who came here and made the very best of her opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, 2018 outstanding graduate, Carolina Temponi Gonsalves. Good night, everybody. Ooh. Whoa. One day, I thought about being here. One day, I wished I could be here. One day, I prayed that I could be here. I did. I'm here. If you, if you have something in your mind, if you really wish you could do something, believe in it. When I was in high school, I wanted to be a volleyball player. I woke up thinking about volleyball and went sleeping thinking about volleyball. Do you know what? I was a volleyball player. My mom always told me, your thoughts arrive before you. Imagine yourself where you want to be. And at the time that I really started doing that, I start, started working. Incredible. I'm here. It was not easy. It's not easy. Being so far from our families. I'm lucky. Um, I can go home every year. Some international students here, they never go home or like they stand the whole two years here, some of them stayed whole four years here, and they don't go see their families, and you guys are my hero. If I had been successful the first time, I wouldn't be here. My failures made me who I am today, and they're still shaping my way. Volleyball is a game-based mistakes. It's impossible you play this game it doesn't make one mistake during the match. So is life. Make your mistakes, learn with them, and go to the next point. Another topic that brought me here today is about respect. You all will be impressed with how respect is sorry, reciprocal. Respect your coats, 
your teammates, your referees, your fans. And talk about fans, what incredible fans Barton has. I'm not talking about just those fans that come, that are your parents that come to see you here. I'm talking about those fans that sit in these chairs. They come to every single game and they follow the Cougars on the road. These fans taught me how to love this place. I was scared of thinking about go getting up here in front of everybody, but that's how I could say thank you for every single person in this community to help me to become who I am today. Coach, you gave me a chance to be here, like coaches do every time with your athletes. But today, in this stage, I believe that I did the best that I could. Also, your parents, um, Tim and Natalie Stifferson, and my host parents, Mama, Katie Ribo and Papa, my Terry Ribo. Thank you for giving me a family here. Um, all my bosses, yeah, I have three bosses, sorry. <laughs> Um, who gave me the opportunity to be a student employee. Brooke Thompson, Trace and Madison Wagner, also Patrick Bush and Baudilio Hernandez. Thank you for your support during the last year. I really appreciate your job in Central Kansas Upper Bound. And Todd Moore, I have no words to express my gratitude for all that you have done for me and Monique. Thank you. A special thank you for you, Monique, who have been my partner this year. This year? Sorry, guys. Hi. For everything. When I was down, you pushed me up. You stayed by my side. I couldn't, I couldn't be here without you. Thank you. Love you. I would like to say thank you all Barton instructors. Um, that's my English professors, Abby Ho and Joyner and Grow. Well, I'm here, I'm speaking English, and <laughs> so I think they did a pretty good job. <laughs> Thank you all, all of you that make these graduates today. And finally, uh, I'd like to uh, excuse me a little bit to talk in Portuguese some words for my family, because it's my mom's birthday. Um, my Parabéns. Obrigado por tudo que você fez por mim. Minha mãe, meu pai, toda minha família que está assistindo, todo mundo que acreditou em mim, vocês me trouxeram aqui hoje. Obrigado, Mima, por, por me ensinar que eu também podia ir longe. Muito obrigada. Eu amo vocês. Finally, not above all, the people that build my character, my personality, and make me who I am, my family. My mom, who made me resilient and taught me how to dream. My dad, who taught me how to do my job and be respect with everybody. And my brother, who showed me that dreams are reachable. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Carol. Carol's mother could not attend this evening, and it is her birthday, but she contacted Barton and asked that I share a message on her behalf. And it's unusual, but after Monique translated, because unfortunately, I neither read nor speak Portuguese, I could not deny Carol's mother's chance to share her words. Her mother said, 
Today is my birthday, and even far away, my little girl surprises me and makes me proud one more time. Congratulations on all your achievements, my princess. Carol has always been such a generous person, as you all know. And I know that now she must be with her heart broken because she is leaving people who have made the difference in her life. But I am sure that wherever she is, she will never forget you and what she has experienced at Barton. She will keep spreading love, light, and all the knowledge she received at Barton. The only way I can think of to thank you is to pray for all her instructors, her friends, and the families who have taught and loved our Carol. A special thank you to Coach Brandon for the opportunity, Kathy and Ter Terry Rebel for welcoming Carol and Monique to their house. Barton wrote a beautiful and unforgettable chapter in Carol's life, and I will never forget it. I am grateful with all my heart for everything you have done for her. May God bless you and watch over you with his divine mercy. With great pride, Hosanna Tamponi Gonsalves. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enrique Martinez Flores of San Salvador, El Salvador. is the son of Laura Flores and Oscar Martinez. While attending Barton, Enrique has completed as, competed as part of the Cougar Track and Field program, earning All-American honors in both the weight throw and the hammer throw. He has participated in the Dante Deo student organization and been involved with various community service projects, including with Rosewood Rodeo, Habitat for Humanity, and Heartland Church. Additionally, he has been a member of the Phi Theta Kappa National Honor Society. Enrique will continue both his academic and his track and field career at Manhattan College, an NJCAA Division I institution in New York, where he will work toward a bachelor's degree in government. His eventual career goal is to earn his Juris Doctorate and become an attorney. About Enrique, his nominator said this, every student who will be graduating on May 11th is an outstanding student. However, there are truly a few who are very special. In my long teaching career, I have known several and Enrique Martinez is one. His growth in academics and in athletics has been remarkable and he has excelled in spite of the many barriers he had to overcome. In athletics, Enrique is proud to represent Barton and his home country. He has represented his country at the Pan American and Central American Games, and I plan to see him carrying the El Salvadoran flag at the next Olympics. Enrique has been committed to various community service, and as busy as he is, he always makes the time to help other students. Ladies and gentlemen, 2018 outstanding graduate, Enrique Martinez Flores. <clears throat> Fills me with great joy to stand up here and see so many familiar faces. I am very proud of graduating with this class of 2018. And I would like to thank God, first and foremost, for permitting me to come to study at Barton Community College and to meet so many wonderful people. Before that, I'd like to say a little bit, uh, thanks to my family from flying in from El Salvador yesterday. And they're over there. <laughs> I was a little bit against it because as a lot of international students here know and like there's people that come from farther away from El Salvador, which is decently far, I guess. 
And really, guys, we only have two to three graduations in our life. And this is one of them. And we got to make the most of it, be happy. And for those people that do not have your families here, I want to say that they're, if they're at back home, they are very proud of everyone here. Also, I don't want to forget the teachers and staff here at Barton Community College for working with me and the other students and athletes when we have to miss class for whatever reason, may it be work or uh, athletics, whatever. And I know you guys have it kind of hard sometimes with us, like coming after finals and be like, hey, did you grade this? Did you grade that? I know y'all can relate. So thank you all for that. And of course, Ms. McCaffrey for nom nominating me for this. Uh, I really appreciate that. And Ms. Stevens for helping me out with the speech. And I could be going on and on with all the teachers because I see so many faces here and I've taken most of your classes and done pretty well, I think. So <laughs> appreciate all you guys. And um, also can't forget about my track and field team here. Yep. We're working super hard, guys. Uh, this next weekend, hopefully we can put up another banner up in the wall. See where Trevor's going to organize them after that, right? <laughs> and um, man, also shout out to my throw squad, which is on, like my small family over here, I guess you could say. Hey, we got a couple of them graduating today. And uh, a couple of them going to be graduating next year, hopefully. And um, also my roommate, Graham Sokol, for being a positive role model <laughs> and uh, for teaching me some culture here in the United States and as I was saying I could be going on forever and ever because man I see so many faces over here and it makes me so happy to see that all you guys made it here so thank you guys for that and uh, also last but not least I don't know if my coach Dave Shenick is in the crowd today or he's over there in the back <laughs> uh, thank you for believing in me when not a lot of people did in my capacity as an athlete and I know it's hard to recruit an international athlete with not really like great background. I wasn't champion or if anything. Uh, and since I came here, I've improved a lot and recently broke the school record. So I attribute that to your help, Coach Dave. And um, hopefully I have proved that it was a risk you did not regret taking with me. Before coming to Barton, I was going through my second year of law school in my country. And I was setting up for be a career and I was very happy about it. But then the option to come here to Barton came up and my family supported me to drop out and come here to pursue my athletic career. And of course, the studies here in the United States are better. So I really appreciate you guys for supporting me through that step. And now it has opened a lot of opportunities for me. I'm going to uh, school in New York, a division one, a uh, very good academic school and I'm very happy about that. And I own that to a lot of people over here at Barton that has helped me to that too. And um, every athlete here, knows the effort that you guys have to put in to have good grades and be good at sports. I mean, losing your free time, going to sleep early, um, taking care of your health, stuff like that. And man, I remember when I first came here and like, as I was saying, I was taking two years to law school. I hadn't seen any math at all for like two years. And they told me, hey, you're gonna have to take all your basics again. And I was like, for real? And they told me, yeah, algebra. I was like, man, I don't even know. Oh, that's actually gonna be intermediate algebra first. Man, I remember I got a C in that class and it was rough, but I ended up getting an A in college algebra because I'm sure you got better, right? So I appreciate Ms. Bretches and Mr. Harrington for helping me out with that. Um, also, man, all you guys here that don't have a car, of course, you guys know how hard it is to get a ride into town, man. It gets rough sometimes, especially after you're hungry after that dinner. doesn't fill you up. Oh, you guys like that. And, man, thank God for Pizza Hut, right, guys? Um... I want to give a little shout out to a hard worker here in Barton Community College. And his name is Christian Lyon. If you want to stand up real quick. Man, this guy, his son was born here at Barton Community College. And well, most of you have seen him working either at the library or the post office or the uh, mail room. And like he still does that. He still keeps his grades beside him. and. The guy ran a 10 flat uh, a couple not while ago, uh, not too long ago. I, I believe like top 10 times in the world this year. So that's just a little show of like talent that's here at Barney Community College, not just in track and field, but in every other sport, uh, basketball, tennis, all that there is. So it really makes me proud about Barney Community College and how hard the people work here, especially the athletes too. And also, although I got selected to be an outstanding graduate this year, um, I wish to say that everyone here is an outstanding graduate for many reasons because I know each and every person here has a backstory that has pushed them towards success. And I want everyone of this class of 2018 to continue to pursue their dreams 
were asked if they're going to a four-year school, uh, they're going to work after this, or whatever you guys are going to do. I hope you guys do the best at it because we only get one chance at life, and we got to make the most of it, guys. So to end it off, uh, try and keep this short. Uh, this place will always have a spot in my heart, and I'm pretty sure there's not another school like this where every one of us can relate like a family. Like I know big Division One schools, Division Two, whatever. You go to those schools, and when you graduate, you're going to see people that you have never seen before. But I stand up here, and I see all you guys, and man, I've seen all y'all pretty much here at school. So just want to say that. And to end it up, um, just want to say God bless everyone, and go Cougars. Now I will ask Barton County Campus Phi Theta Kappa National Honor Society faculty co-advisor Stephanie Gorl to come forward to present the Phi Theta Kappa Academic Team Awards. Ms. Gorl. Every year at this time, I have the honor of introducing Barton's candidates for the USA Academic All-American Team, co-sponsored by USA Today and Phi Theta Kappa International Honor Society for two-year college students. This annual competition draws more than 1,500 candidates from over 750 two-year schools for its 20-member team. Institutions may nominate only two students for this award. In Kansas, nominees, are automatic, nominees automatically become members of the all-Kansas academic team. In addition to the honor of just being selected, every all-Kansas academic team member receives a generous stipend and scholarship from the Kansas Board of Regents and the Kansas Association of Community Colleges. Historically, Barton has been fortunate to have a wealth of academically excellent students, as you've just seen, apply for this competitive scholarship, and this year's candidates are no exception. Phi Theta Kappa is blessed to be associated with this year's candidates as they have been instrumental in our chapter's growth and campus involvement. Barton's 2017-18 candidates for the All-USA Academic Team are Brittany Barber and Emmy Kempke. Emmy graduates today with an Associate of Science degree with an emphasis in accounting. While at Barton, Emmy has represented Barton well, serving as Phi Theta Kappa's co-community service chairman, president of the community service organization, and vice president of SPARC. Since her initiation into Phi Theta Kappa, I cannot think of a PTK event that Emmy did not attend. In her spare time, Emmy teaches hunter safety courses, and somehow she managed to work part-time these past two springs as an intern in an accounting firm. Despite her busy schedule, Emmy has kept academics a focus, being named to the President's Honor Roll. Next fall, Emmy will attend Wichita State University, where she plans to continue her education in accounting. Emmy's parents are Randy Kempke and Jennifer Kempke. Please, in, please join me in congratulating Emmy. Brittany Barber graduates today with an Associate of Science degree in accounting. While at Barton, Brittany has grown into a confident, capable leader, serving as Vice President of the Community Service Organization, President of SPARC, and Phi Theta Kappa Social Chair. In her spare time, Brittany manages the concession stand at the Wetlands Water Park. Even with her many commitments, Brittany has kept academics as a focus, 
earning Dean's List Honors and a Business Departmental Award. Brittany will transfer to Fort Hayes State University, continuing her studies in accounting. Brittany is the daughter of Willie and Michelle Barber. Congratulations, Brittany. <laughs> Congratulations, Brittany and Emmy. Through your passion, involvement, and commitment, you have left your mark on Barton. We will miss you, but we are certain that wherever life takes you, you will enjoy the same success you experienced here at Barton. Please join us one more time in celebrating Emmy and Brittany's achievement. Thank you, Ms. Gorl. As we continue our special recognition of indi individual contribution and achievement, I ask instructor, department chair, and faculty council vice chair, Mr. Peter Soli, to come forward. He will be presenting Barton's 2018 Distinguished Instructor Award recipients. Mr. Soli? Excuse me. <clears throat> Each year, Barton recognizes exceptional teaching with our Distinguished Instructor Awards. Instructors deemed exceptional not only in the classroom, helping their students learn to grow in a variety of ways, going far beyond what is expected of them. Award recipients are nominated by their Barton colleagues with nominations evaluated by the Faculty Council which identifies our honorees. This year, it is my distinct honor to recognize five instructors for this award, three of whom are with us today. Two will be recognized during activities associated with the Fort Riley and Fort Leavenworth commencement exercises. They are James Henderson, a full-time faculty member at the Grandview Plaza campus, and Randley Klinger, a just uh, adjunct faculty at the Fort Leavenworth campus. With us this evening are Dr. Ola Gravinsky, full-time life science instructor at the Great Bend campus, Casey Strickland, adjunct English and literature instructor on the Great Bend campus, and Mackenzie Maldonado, adjunct instructor of CPR, combat lifesaver, and military field sanitation at the Grandview Plaza campus. Will Mackenzie Maldonado please join me at the podium? For Mackenzie, I have a good story to tell. While an emergency medical technician in Oklahoma, Mackenzie Maldonado was honored by the American Ambulance Association as a finalist for the 2008 for their Stars of Life Award. The award seeks to honor those who epitomize the spirit of commitment of our nation's top ambulance service professionals. According to the Do Daily Oklahoman, Maldonado and her partner rescued a woman in distress in a most spectacular fashion. In part, the article reads, Maldonado and Nelson had just begun a 12-hour shift when they were called to help a woman who had fallen onto rocks in the Oklahoma River. They didn't have an exact location, but quickly began their search for the woman. Once the pair located the woman, they realized they could not reach her with their ambulance. They stopped in a park, a quarter of a mile away, grabbed their gear and rushed to the patient who was chest deep in water. We were the only ones there, but we didn't think about it, we just did it. You, you can't think about what ifs with what we do. Maldonado entered the water to treat the woman just as her head began to sink. Nelson helped Maldonado who was also sinking in the mud. I was able to hold her around her waist and Nelson grabbed her underneath her arms so Kendra had to pull her up to the shore by herself. After the victim was safely on the rocky shore, then the firefighters arrived to help treat the patient and to pull Maldonado out of the water. 
but the pair's workday had just started. They refused their opportunity to return, return home to change clothes, and they re immediately responded to another medical call. That's just how it goes, sometimes Maldonado said with a laugh, it's our job. Maldonado soon transferred her passion for saving lives in the field to training others to save lives. She served as a lieutenant in the education department of the Emergency Medical Services Authority in Oklahoma City. She then trained as a paramedic and became a sergeant in the education department where she taught academies and then helped paramedics in the ambulance perfect their skills. Maldonado returned to Kansas to assist her mother care for her ailing father. Her EMT training and license was earned at Manhattan Area Technical School in 2004. She now serves the Barton community with combat lifesaver and military field sanitation training for soldiers at Fort Riley. Mackenzie came to military school by mistake that ended up being a great asset to the school. Mackenzie applied for a lab assistant position meant for our hazmat program. So HR, uh, HR diverted her to the EMT program since she was a paramedic. After finding out more about her EMT experience and credentials as a paramedic, military programs hired her to teach combat lifesaver courses. This ended up being a great find for military programs. Mackenzie actively engages her students through learning through hands-on application. During her lectures, she found that, find, found that using the hands-on approach is more effective than using PowerPoint slides. With her background as a paramedic, she incorporates real-world emergency medical services into her classes. She incorporated the new moulange kits for her combat life-saving classes that brings a more realistic aspect to her students. Mackenzie uses assessments to assure that her students are comprehending and understanding the materials by encouraging her students to address lectures or topics that were unclear at the end of each lesson. She continually receives positive feedback and praise from students and faculty who have attended her classes. Mackenzie's professional organization involvement activities include Board of Emergency Services as a paramedic, continuing education and training to maintain her emergency medical service credentials. She encourages her students to consider and pursue their educational goals. I congratulate you on your recognition as a Barton Distinguished Instructor. Will Casey Strickland please join me at the podium? This is not the first time Casey Strickland has stood at this podium. In May of 2003, she graduated from Barton with Associate of Science in Computer Information Systems. While coaching a youth recreational tennis league, Casey realized that she had a passion for teaching and an overwhelming desire to make a difference in the lives of young people. As a result, she changed her major to English and has been in the classroom since 2005. Casey believes that the best teachers are those who make their subject relevant to students. She personally enjoys the challenge of linking the content she teaches to the daily lives of today's young adults. She believes that all students should be given an opportunity to acquire knowledge and be themselves in an environment in which they feel safe and comfortable. She encourages students to develop their own opinions and to challenge others' thinking while remaining a respectful and mature attitude. Ms. Strickland is constantly improving and updating her instruction methods, utilizing various forms of technology to provide new and exciting twists to classic literature and old rhetoric. Casey strives to be a teacher who makes learning challenging, relevant, and rewarding. She urges students to embrace challenges as opportunities to become people of upstanding character. Casey realizes that every day teachers are given countless opportunities to make a difference in the life of a young adult. For her, this is the best part of teaching. Casey wants her students to understand and appreciate the mechanics of language, conventions of self-expression, and the beauty of literature 
but she also wants to help mold them into responsible and productive members of society. It is in this responsibility that Casey invests herself and to which she dedicates her professional life. Casey has been teaching for 12 years and has bought, taught Barton classes for the last five. She teaches advanced placement English courses at Great Bend High School, where she serves as an in adjunct instructor for Barton Community College. In addition to these adjunct courses, Casey teaches a number of literature and writing courses for Barton Basics program. Through association with the Barton Basics program, she has been working to gather inmate writing and artwork submissions, digitize them, and get them to a panel of Barton team members who are assisting her to curate the selections for publication. This publication will be the first of its kind, and despite its challenges thus far, Ms. Strickland says, I still believe in this project and in recognizing these men for their creations. I congratulate you on your recognition as a Barton Distinguished Instructor. <laughs> Will Dr. Oleg Rinsky, please join me at the podium. <laughs> Dr. Oleg Rinsky's love of teaching brought him to Barton Community College seven years ago, and in that time he has exemplified excellence. Drawing on his two decades of veterinary clinical practice, Dr. Rinsky uses real case studies to illustrate the links between con complex physiological processes, captivating students with vivid stories they long remember and use to anchor information for later retrieval. The nomination letter for Dr. Ravinsky contained the following story. It reads as follows. I often wondered if Dr. Ravinsky, Ravinsky's students appreciated the unique perspective he brought to the classroom until one day a distraught young woman stopped by the laboratory. After explaining that she had scored a B on an important exam in pharmacy school, the young woman asked if Dr. Ravinsky would have time to visit with her. Dr. Ravinsky spent considerable time in the laboratory that day, reviewing the phys physiology concepts she was struggling with and helping her develop st study strategies. As the young woman departed, a smile had replaced tears, and her head was held high with confidence. When asked later why a pharmacy student would visit him, Dr. Ravinsky casually explained she was a former student just needing a little help with pharmacy school. Over the course of the year, it occurred to me the reason Dr. Ravinsky was so casual about the pharmacy student's visit, that it was not unique. Just about every week, a former student would show up at Barton, often driving considerable distance to seek his advice, share their success, and spend time with him. I realized then, not only do his students appreciate the unique perspective he brings to the classroom, they continue to draw on it long after graduating from Barton. Soon after he began teaching at Barton, other divisions recognized Dr. Ravinsky's unique experiences and skills and asked that he develop an online pathophysiology course. Dr. Ravinsky met the challenge head on and has been teaching the course online for four years. While developing the pathophysiology course, Dr. Ravinsky saw the need for additional course content beyond the textbook supplied material. To fill this need, he created a course package, which he sends to students as soon as they have enrolled in the course. These course packages contain hundreds of pages of study material, including brilliant anatomy photographs and illustrations along with practice exam questions. Recognizing that his teaching is, not, is only as good as his current knowledge, Dr. Ravinsky continues to keep current with rapidly evolving science landscape by participation in professional medical and teaching organizations. Dr. Ravinsky's tenure at Barton has also been categorized by excellence in leadership and support of the college's mission. He currently serves as chair of the science and math department, a position he has held for five years. He also serves as a committee member on the Jack, Silby, Jack Kilby Science Day Planning Committee, newly formed STEM committee, 
Dr. Ravinsky's service extends beyond the institution. During the past five years, he served as a course reviewer for EDUCAN. Beyond the college's academic setting, Dr. Ravinsky served our community in various capacities, including visiting La Crosse High School weekly for several years, bringing not only his microbiology expertise, but the actual microscopes and slides that the students use. Dr. Ravinsky has been called upon to lend his clinical veterinary expertise to the Great Bend Brit Spa Zoo when asked to perform ultrasounds on rare mammal species. Dr. Ravinsky's tenure at Barton epitomizes all the best qualities of a college instructor, from his excellence in the classroom to the service he provides to Barton and the larger community. I congratulate you on your recognition as a Barton Distinguished Instructor. Next, we welcome Barton's Executive Director of Institutional Advancement, Colleen Cape. She will present the Foundation's 2018 Distring Distinguished Service Award. Thank you so very much. A child's life is like a blank piece of paper. And each and every person, man, woman, and child that touches that life makes an indelible mark upon that piece of paper. That is true of your parents, grandparents, extended family, friends, and your teachers, most especially your teachers. The painting that they are able to produce on that blank piece of paper creates a work of art, a thing of beauty for all of the world to see. Their collective contributions to your life are what make you each unique with your own special talents and gifts to share with the world. For the majority of you graduating this evening, your life has also been touched by those that you will never know or have the opportunity to meet, but who believed in your potential and your purpose. Last June, over 225 scholarships were awarded to Barton students because of the generosity of others. Donors to the foundation in support of scholarships for Barton Community College play an enormous role in this evening's activities and the success of the graduates that are gathered here. In 1981, the foundation created an award to honor just such committed and dedicated donors to both the foundation and the college. Tonight, it is with both, both with great pride and extreme appreciation that on behalf of the Barton Community College Foundation Board of Directors, I present this year's Distinguished Service Award to Larry and Kathy Schubert. Thank you for your dedication over the years to Barton and the enhancement that you've brought to our community and our students. Thank you, Ms. Cape, and thank you once again to Kathy and Larry Shugart for your longstanding and unwavering support of Barton. And now, we move on to what has brought us together this evening. Barton Vice President of Instruction, Elaine Simmons, and Board of Trustees Chair, Mr. Mike Johnson, will come forward to confer the diplomas, certificates, and degrees. Following the conferring of these credentials, Medical Lab Technology Instructor Dana Weber will present the certificate recipients and the graduates by name. Barton Trustees will award certificates and diplomas. 
and Dr. Heilman will offer Barton's official congratulations. Okay, here we go. Students, please rise. <laughs> Audience members, the students before you are candidates for the Kansas State High School Diploma, the Associate of General Studies, the Associate of Applied Science, the Associate of Arts, the Associate of Science degree and or completion of a certificate program. As Vice President of Instruction for Barton Community College, I certify that these candidates have met the requirements for their respective diploma, associate degree and or certificate program as set forth by the Kansas Board of Regents and have successfully completed their prescribed courses of study as determined by the faculty. Chairman Johnson, I recommend to you these candidates for graduation. Candidates, upon the recommendation of the faculty and staff of Barton Community College, I do hereby confer upon you the diplomas, degrees, and or certifications appropriate to the requirements you have met with all the rights, honors, responsibilities, and privileges appertaining thereto. Graduates, as an outward symbol of this educational milestone, you may now turn your tassels. Congratulations. Graduates, you may be seated. Vicki Crawford, GED. <laughs> Rebecca Gentet, Gente, GED. <laughs> Rocio. Ponce, GED. <laughs> Ashley Vanneman, GED. <laughs> Trista Wysong, GED. Antonio Quiroz, Welding Technology Certificate. Edgar Ramirez, Certificate, Welding Technology. Eric Ramirez Martinez, Certificate, Welding Technology. <laughs> Seth Wilds, Certificate, Crop Protection. <laughs> Omar Talamante, Certificate, Natural Gas. Eileen Hernandez, Certificate, Nursing PN. Caitlin 
Shalowski, Certificate, Nursing PN. The following students are receiving their Associate in Arts. Monique Aguar de Oliveira, with high honors. Kirsty Ashworth. Kyler Becerra, high honors. Dodger Beckham. Bricks. Bricks Berkey. Ricky Bricky. Samson Colebrook. Cortez. Cayenne <laughs> Dalmaripple. Kenyan Dalmaripple. <laughs> Jose Flores, honor. Juliana Gonzalez Chagas, honor. Rebecca Griffin, high honors. Seth Gruber, honors. Shelby Herman, honor. Marquise Hill. Vaiti Pong Homruan, high honors. Audra Julian. Alexis Carabinas, high honors. Austin Levingston. Enrique Martinez Flores, honor. <laughs> Hilton McLean. <laughs> Alvin McCray, honors. <laughs> Next trustees, please. Marcel Miasano, high honors. Kermani Mighty. Cecily. Cecily Mills, honors. Alyssa. 
Marissa Moody. Honors. Peyton Noose. Morgan Olaf. Abel Prieto. Paola Ramirez Lucio. Christian Rivas, high honors. Alexander Robel, high honors. Willie Rogers. Maya Rodriguez. Kiosha Sanders. Tia Stewart. Latoya Stewart. Jacob Erbacher, honors. <laughs> Terrence Ware. <laughs> Carol Weiss, high honors. <laughs> Austin McHenry. AAS in Automotive Technology. Dillion? David DeLeon, AAS in Business Management and Leadership with Honors. <laughs> Andrea Ketch, AAS in Business Manage Management and Leadership with High Honors. Devin Nelson, AAS Business Management and Leadership. Jasmine Reyes, AAS Business Management and Leadership. Monica Shorman, AAS Business Administration Technology. High honors. <laughs> Alyssa Edwards, AAS Early Childhood. <laughs> Jessica Stroud, AAS Early Childhood. <laughs> Vanessa Watson. AAS, Early Childhood. <laughs> Suzanne Yarmer, AAS, Medical Administrative Technology, High Honors. <laughs> Christina Hedberg, AAS, Medical Assistant. Livingston, AAS Medical Assistant. Angela Pando, AAS Medical Assistant.
Melinda Consolver, AAS Medical Lab Technician. Daniel Lewis, AAS Medical Lab Technician. Jessica Winkler, AAS Medical Lab Technician. Misty Wise, AAS Medical Lab Technician. Cameron Starnes, AAS Natural Gas with Honors. Cameron Tweedy, AAS Natural Gas with Honors. Justin White, AAS Natural Gas. Clay Zeller, AAS Natural Gas with High Honors. Julie Becker, AAS Registered Nursing. Carla Frank, AAS Registered Nursing. Johnson, AAS, Registered Nursing with Honors. Julie Keller, AAS, Registered Nursing, Honors. Allison Kirkendall, AAS, Registered Nursing. Tanya Pike, AAS Registered Nursing. <laughs> Melissa Ramirez, AAS Registered Nursing with Honors. <laughs> Rebecca Rebel, AAS Registered Nursing. Rebecca Reeves, AAS Registered Nursing. <laughs> Wendy Rowe, AAS Registered Nursing. <laughs> Brianna Towers, AAS Registered Nursing. Caitlin Weber, AAS Registered Nursing. <laughs> Jewel Radke, AAS Tech Accounting Specialist with Honors. Justin Roach, AAS Tech Accounting Specialist. The following students are receiving their associates in general studies. Selena Fletcher. Nicole Hook. Haley Jump with high honors. Tiffany Lamb with high honors. Christian Lyon. The following students.
students are receiving their associate in science. Emma Austin. Brittany Barber with high honors. Fiona Barnes. Taylor Becker. Erica Bieberly. Alexis Boak, high honors. Amanda Carty with honors. Zachary Clothier with high honors. Kristen Colley. Jordan Dremel with honors. Jacqueline? Jacqueline Enriquez. Luis Espino. Alexandria Julian with high honors. Alexander K.
David Kelly. Emmy Kempke with high honors. Miranda Kern with high honors. Danielle Colton. Jennifer Ladd with honors. Heather Lamb with honors. Sanjay Lawrence with honors. Rachel Laura. Rosiana Mamos. Jillian. Jillian Martin. Jason McKenzie with high honors. Shanika McLeod. Mahendra McGuite. Deneen Metheny with high honors. Elsie Miller with high honors. Alondra Moreno. Gavin Overmiller with honors. Destiny Pope as with high honors. Megan Quinday. Vanilo Rukutu Nurivilo, high honors. <laughs> Maria Ramirez Valderrama, high honors. <laughs> Abby Rykuber with high honors. Bethany Reeser with high honors. Mikhail Reyes. Victoria Rodriguez. Magdil Rodriguez Gonzalez with honors. <laughs> Caleb Rudy. <laughs> Colin Sharp with high honors. <laughs> Reagan Smith. Graham Sokol with high honors. Jordan Stolo. Melissa Stout with high honors.
Rangers. Rocky Summers. Santiago Talamantes. Noose Terragrosa Parrots with honors. <laughs> Cynthia Torres. <laughs> Mason Torres. With a certain air of celebration filling our gymnasium, we come to the conclusion of our commencement ceremony. Following the benediction, I would ask the audience to remain at their seats for the colors to be retired and for the recessional. Again, we sincerely thank you for joining with us to celebrate tonight. To our graduates, I would leave you with a quote from Minor Myers and say, go out into the world and do well, but more importantly, go out into the world and do good. Please stand for the benediction and remain standing for the retirement of the colors. Mr. Bernie. Will you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful evening of celebration. We thank you for this powerful, powerful class of 2018 graduates. Father, we've heard uh, that the American dream is alive and well. There's jobs to be had. There's opportunities to be won. And Father, I pray that you will bless this graduating class with big visions, big goals, big dreams. Lord, let them open their hearts up to all you've created them to be. You've created them for abundance and for fullness. And God, the opportunities now. So I pray, God, that you'll bless their hearts, that you'll keep them, you'll guide them, you'll direct them, you'll give them their heart's desires because there's some community changers in this bunch and there's world changers in this bunch. Father, but I pray you'll just continue to walk with them. Whatever journey they have from this point on, Father, I pray you'll walk with them, that you'll keep their road straight, you'll keep them focused, Lord, and you'll just continue to bless and guide them so their life can be worthy of your calling. Lord, just be with us as we go from this place tonight. Give us travel mercies back to our homes, but let us have sweet fellowship um, the remainder of our time that we have with family and friends. God, we just thank you for a wonderful evening, and now we just ask you to continue to watch over, guide, and keep us. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Guard. Please retire the colors.
Barton Community College proudly presents the graduating class of 2018.